Hi everyone and welcome to Mark Green Nutrition and today we're going to be talking about why slimming groups condition you to gain weight long term. I see a lot of weight management clients in my practice. It's well into the thousands, so I'm seeing a lot of people consistently who struggle with their weight. And one thing all these people have in common is their inability to sustain weight loss. Most will tell you they have been on every diet under the sun in the hopes of shifting some weight, and often they've had some success using various different programs, and usually these are slimming groups, and they have all put the weight back on with interest and that's when they come to see me. If this sounds like you, keep watching. Speaking with patients and clients, I've managed to grasp a pretty clear understanding of where the problems lay. And shockingly, I believe it may be the slimming clubs themselves that set up my patients for long-term failure with weight loss. But first, a disclaimer. I don't think this is intentional. Also, if you follow a slimming club method, chances are you will lose weight. In fact, I think the systems themselves are very robust and a good way to lose weight, especially in the short term. However, there are some fundamental elements which they promote, which set up their customers to fail long term. So what are these? Number one, weekly weigh-ins. Slimming groups are responsible for the commonly held belief that we, as humans, should see significant changes to our weight week to week when this is not the truth. It sets you up to fail. At first, yes, you may see some changes, but over time, weight loss week to week will not show up. Week to week is affected by so many variables, for example, changes in hydration, activity, water retention, or any bodily function. It can mask any weight loss or gain that you might see week to week. However, people don't see this on the scales. All they see is no weight loss, despite the fact they may have actually reduced their fat mass, but they can't see that. This then demotivates them, and quite frequently, over time, leads to a relapse into old behaviors, whereby the patient puts weight back on, and often more than they started, especially if they are seeing newer members losing large amounts of weight in their first few weeks. Therefore, week-to-week -week weigh ins do not demonstrate long-term weight deviations. A more reliable measure is what your weight has done over a month or longer. I don't weigh any of my patients anything more frequently than once a month. I can't even tell you the number of times my clients tell me they haven't lost any weight because they're measuring week-to-week, -week, only to find that they've lost some weight when I weigh them because I'm comparing month-to-month and it's because we have some daylight between the measurements. It has allowed enough time for us or for them to create the necessary calorie deficit to elicit weight loss, which we can then see, which you wouldn't notice week to week. Consider as a very unscientific yet general rule of thumb, it takes approximately minus 3,500 calories under your body's calorie requirement to lose one pound of fat. Now think how you would achieve that in one week. You could try to distribute it over one week evenly, for example. This means minus 500 calories below your body's calorie requirement each day. So you're taking 500 calories away. So if you were to only achieve this five days out of the week, you won't have even lost one pound for the previous week. So it won't register. You do this over a month, assuming 30 days in a month. Suddenly we have nearly three pounds off over um, a month or 34 pounds over a year, which is nearly 2.5 stones, which is quite significant. This is just an example, and in reality, you could lose more weight than this. However, it does tie in nicely with my next point. Number two, unrealistic expectations. How long has it taken you to put on your weight? I'm gonna hedge a bet and say it's been years. 
You didn't put all that weight on over a six month period. Yet because of the mindset slimming groups condition their members to think like, they expect to lose all the weight very quickly. If it takes years to put on and keep it on, it will take years to lose it and keep it off. It is unrealistic to think otherwise, so manage your expectations. Number three, eating behavior. Slimming groups are keen to emphasize you can diet, but still enjoy your beloved treats and foods. Any long-term sustainable plan should have room for enjoyment and indulgences. I mean, food is there to be enjoyed after all, and it's a very social thing. Of course it is. Whilst on the Slimming Club program, you're able to regulate these indulgences by counting calories or points or sins or whatever it might be. However, what these groups are inadvertently doing is conditioning you to think you absolutely must have a treat every day. So what happens when you stop the diet plan? You have now conditioned yourself to need a treat every single day, but you are no longer regulating your intake. This is going to end in weight loss disaster. There is nothing wrong with treats, but you don't need one every day. We trick ourselves into thinking that without a treat, you will be unable to get through the day or even binge later. Yet by doing this every day without regulating it, you are already binging or overeating, which is evident by the fact that you have gained weight. Therefore, you must be aware of your behavior. Do not obsess about it, but you need to pay some attention to this because it's important. Number four, they don't teach you. This title perhaps is a little bit unfair as they do try to educate you to some extent. However, you are following their system. They aren't teaching you what to look for on food labels. How many of you could honestly pick up a food label and tell me whether something is good or a bad option outside of your point sins or other measures? So they don't promote this lateral thinking. There's no education with these groups. You have become reliant on them, a robot in a way. You need to be able to be educated about the correct choices, which is what these slimming clubs do not do. You are absolutely reliant upon them. So for example, knowing things like foods with less than five grams per hundred grams of sugar are considered low sugar, or actually what does a portion look like? Some of these clubs allow as much rice and pasta as you want. Once you finish the diet, you're now conditioned to eat as much rice and pasta as you wish because they can't possibly be a problem with these foods because they are free. But this is despite the fact now that the calories have increased elsewhere in your diet. So you don't have that room for maneuver. You don't have that margin of error in your diet to compensate for the increased load of rice and pasta. So there's no lateral thinking. I'm a weight management dietitian, so I see this stuff day in and day out, but it's still just my opinion. However, if this makes sense to you, I suggest you start to try to educate yourself about food and weight loss and try not to just rely on the Slimming Club methods. If you have any questions, you know, please get in touch and I'll be happy to help. You can find my contact details at markgreennutrition.co.uk or you can drop me an email using markgreennutrition at gmail.com and you can subscribe to the channel, which I'd recommend because you're going to have plenty more videos coming just like this, all designed to educate you about the best ways to lose weight. So thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you soon.